Welcome to Bridging the Gap, election 2014. Yep, November the 14th is right around the corner and everybody's talking about the upcoming election. And so we decided to bring some of our potential elected officials in. And I am just so very excited to have my guests with you today. And on my left, I got Mr. Petey over here, who's, he dressed like me. Did you notice he dressed like me? <laughs> um, he's going to be my co-host tonight, and we're going to be talking on the first half of our show about um, voting, why she should vote. What's the problem with voting? What's different about this election as opposed to the presidential election? And most importantly, why should you, the voter, go out and vote? Um, so we're going to engage them today and give them a little bit of a test, um, because why would you want to invite a vote uh, candidate into your home, into your uh, elected official position if they didn't know about what's going on in our city. So that's the test for them tonight. And then on the second half of our show, we're going to talk about the amendments. Oftentimes the amendments get kind of watered down or lost, and we want to make sure you, the voters, know exactly how the amendments go on the state, in the city, and the local level. First, I want to invite you and tell you who I have with me today. I have uh, Reverend Lawrence Powell. And Mr. Powell, you are with who? Uh, Donna Clark for mayor, okay. and I also, uh, on a larger scale, represent uh, the faith-based community, uh, kind of the voice of and paying attention to those things that affect us at large. Thank you for being with me today. I appreciate Thank you, for you having standing me, in. And we also have, also to my left, Ms. Deb Moore. And Debbie, where are you in the election? Why am I in the election? Well, I believe that uh, the Board of County Commission is missing one thing, and that is a female on the board. Um, I also believe that we need a full-time county commissioner, and I'm in this for that. Um, I am in a unique position to be a full-time county commissioner. And thank you for being with me. Thank you. And Mr. Mark, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Ms. Carter. Thank and what you. are you doing here? Hey, I'm running for City Council District 6, and I'm very excited about it. Well, thank you very much. And for those of you out there, these are um, ladies and gentlemen who are going to be running for the position. So to hopefully today they will be able to convince you that they're the person that should be running. So let's talk about voting. Um, one of the big things is voters' apathy. And uh, it, can you guys help us understand what exactly that is? Sure. You know, I can relay a story to you. Um, you know, I, I've been driving back and forth to Perdido Key, which is in my district. And I stopped in at Brothers Barbecue. Um, I had met the owner out at uh, one of the festivals where I was working Amendment 1, as a matter of fact. And um, he's a new resident to um, our beautiful Gulf Coast. And I stopped in to ask him, you know, if he had decided who he was going to vote for in the county election. And he said, you know, I've only been a resident here for two years. And I usually, or not quite two years, and I usually wait about two years to learn more about my county officials before I decide to vote. And I said, well, you know, you really need to think faster than that because this midterm election, you're going to be making decisions, um, or we're going to be making decisions on people who will be in office for four years. You're going to be making a decision on ballot issues that will be in place for 10 years. So I really encouraged him to think a little bit faster. And uh, although it's a midterm, there are important things that are going to be on the ballot. And uh, their voice is important. How important is the voice of our voters, especially when oftentimes in elections like this, so there's not a huge turnout, Mark. Yeah, no, it's, it's sad. The primary was, what, around 14 or 18 percent turnout, and people bled and died to give us the right to vote. I was uh, registered right after I turned 18 in 99, February of 1999, and I can honestly say I haven't missed an election since turning 18 and being allowed to vote. It's what an honor. So, and for the African-American community, uh, Mr. Powell, um, we turned out for Obama, mm -hmm. um, and somehow uh, in you know places like uh, Macedonia, mm -hmm. where you have over 3,000 voters, you get uh, less than a fourth of them, and yet oftentimes we are the swing vote. Right. Uh, what do you think the challenge there is? <clears throat> Audra, I think I think just kind of natural uh, voter instinct or habit has been to always turn out for the presidential election. Uh, it receives the, the greatest amount of marketing, the greatest amount of hype associated with it. But when I think about voter apathy, I, I think about voter defeat. What do I mean by defeat? Uh, many voters uh, measure their importance of their vote uh, by whether or not they're 
candidate or the item on the ballot passed or not. Uh, and sometimes after a number of defeats, if you would, we begin to internalize that my vote don't matter. Right. Hmm. Uh, and that's the worst thing that we can do because many, many, many candidates and many things on our ballot are won by marginal uh, uh, defeats. So uh, that one vote does count. So we just have to continue to try to educate our voters on that. And part of the excitement of a voter is to know what you're voting about. Right. Candidate awareness, amendment awareness, and sometimes out of sure ignorance sometimes, we stay away from the things that we're not comfortable with. So it, it becomes important to, for people like me and all of us to make sure we educate our voters. Forums like this gives them a chance to hear from the candidates, uh, to hear about the, the, the amendments and those sorts of things in layman terms that they can get it and understand so when they do go to the poll and they're excited about going to the poll, they know what they're going for. Okay, but the other thing is I think that's very important and why I think these candidates decide to come and be a part of this show is People want to know who they're putting in office. Um, can you guys tell me something, to tell the voters something that would really help them feel comfortable with where you would like to see yourself after the election 2014? We'll start with, I guess, Marx, as Marx said. <laughs> yeah. Tell us. Well, thank you, Audra. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about um, where I'd like to see myself. Obviously, I would like to win this election on November 4th. And I believe that we have a very strong chance of winning that. We've had a great response from the community. And when I think it comes to what do people want, what they look for, I think they're tired of broken promises. They're looking for men and women of integrity, of honesty. I was given one of the best compliments six months or so ago when I first got in the race. And they said, Mark, we may not agree on every issue, but your yes is yes and your no is no. And I know where you stand and you're open to hear from the people. And I believe that's what we need in the elected officials is ones that are not going to flip flop or two face, but they're just going to say this is the direction, cast the vision, be open to all demographics and groups and push forward. Well, you know, one of the challenges for uh, many, your District 6 is you have, you have to balance what is actually being done in that area and getting the things that that district needs to be thriving. How would you, if you were elected, would you do that? Exactly. It's a fight. I was asked just this last Saturday in a forum at the Fricker Center uh, if we thought District 6 was being represented fairly and across the board. And I made the, the comparison. I said, you know, when's the last time you drove down Palafox? When's the last time you drove down 17th? When's the last time you drove down Alconies? And compare that to the last time you drove down uh, Belmont or drove down A Street or drove down a different street in the district and it's it's not fair and it's not being just and what may be real important to one group say in Aragon or Seville district may not be the same importance that east side redevelopment has you know we saw North Hill uh, we saw Spring and Balin become two-way to help slow the the traffic there in the last four or five years well Martin Luther King needs the same thing Davis needs the same thing Hay Street needs the same thing it's amazing none of those little boys and girls playing football out there in the street haven't been run over and we why are is one area of the district getting more special treatment than others areas is something I can promise you won't happen under my watch well the challenge is that people say what they mean and then when they elect it they actually deliver so um, I know that for voters, you have to challenge your encumbrance and you have to challenge the people who are running, but you have to hold them accountable. So I take, Deb, you are coming into, like you said, um, there's no women on the commissioner yes. at this point. I mean, how do you plan to get in there and hit the ground running? Well, you know, I got in this race without actually a target on the incumbent who is now out of the race on his back, um, just a desire to serve the people. And um, I know Lawrence Powell from a long time ago. We worked on Lumen May's campaign years ago. Um, so he knows me. He knows what I've been out there doing. And I've been out there working in my community already. Um, when you mention the district that I'm in, most people associate it with Perdido Key because of the incumbent. Um, but it's not Perdido Key. It's downtown, it's the port, it's a lot of businesses down here, but it's also the center of this, of Escambia County. It is uh, Osceola Golf Course, it's uh, all the way up to Hollywood Avenue, it's Myrtle Grove, it's Mayfair, it's Warrington, it's Barrancas. There's a lot of CRAs, it's Brownsville. Let's not forget the south of Brownsville is also in my district. 
those are areas that are designated as CRAs. They're designated as brownfields also. So they require a lot of attention. But there are monies there also that I want to make sure that they're, they're using them correctly to really work those districts to bring bring them back to life. Um, I looked at the uh, the beautification of Navy Boulevard, the project there, and you know the county did some things good. They they talked to every um, business owner and made sure that they were doing what they wanted. So that's my goal. And as a full time county commissioner. I'm going to have the time to do that, to uh, have the coffees with the commissioner, to have meetings, more town hall meetings than just when the county wants something done, just to be out there um, listening to the people's concerns and bringing them back to the county commission board. Um, research, excuse me, research shows that women bring uh, more civility and more productivity to boards. Um, so I, I plan on being in that calm voice that brings the issues back from my people to the board. Um, I plan to be somebody that can um, build consensus between the district to my district and the rest of Escambia County. You know, one of the biggest things about how we grow a city, it's a small business. Yep. And I'm very, very partial, Absolutely. been working with small businesses since I, I'm still a small business and I, I still work with the city and the MGT study and the county and the city, I, I'm, hap I'm very proud. I, I hate to say it, I'm very proud. I, I, I'm happy to say that I'm very proud of the city that they are doing and they are doing the MGT and they're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I can see the growth from 0 0.0 to now over 10%. But the county has it. <clears throat> they're kind of saying, you know, I don't really, you know, the, the feeling is they don't really have to, that, you know, they make, they get, a ton of money, but I, I, I don't know if people are being able to really benefit from as a small business person. So that's something that I'd like both of you to address. How are you going to move that forward? Because we know when you have strong small businesses, you have a strong city. Yeah. Well, and I just saw an article today that the um, African American Chamber of Commerce is talking about this um, spend $30 a month in a small business and uh, there's a program out there that if you do that on a monthly business monthly basis take a selfie and send it to them and they will enter you in a drawing for a uh, prize trip um, so they're out there promoting it we should be also I agree but we have to build those kind of um, zones like Palafox Street in other neighborhoods and that will help promote small business mm -hmm. Mark, quickly before we go to the break, what are your thoughts on sure. that? Sure. I'm a small business owner and have been for the last 14 years. Um, I think the MGT study you're talking about has taken a long ways to get going. Uh, I went and spoke in front of council probably three years ago asking for a small business enterprise zone. Right now, the zip code goes all the way down to like Destin or somewhere where you're still considered a small business down there. And I said, guys, don't we need to give Pensacola and Escambia residents first rights on this? So there's a lot of work that can be done on that. The uh, business fee that's paid by city businesses is significant. It's three or four times larger than the one the county pays. So there's some funding there that could help um, you know, incentivize using local small businesses. Well, as long as we feel that we get the support for the small businesses, I think we can grow Pensacola to far beyond what we've been able to do. And we want you to just stay with us because we're going to be right back and we're going to be talking about the amendments. Hi, my name is Audra Carter, host of Bridging the Gap TV show. Election day is November the 4th. Are you unsure who to vote for? Do you not understand the amendments? Join us on Bridging the Gap Election 2014 and make your vote count. My name is Mark Taylor and I'm running for City Council District 6. I'm a small business owner and a family man. By voting for me, you are choosing integrity over insider politics and electing a council member who will put our residents first. I am Donna Clark and I am running for mayor for 2014 and I need your vote November 4th. Let's open up City Hall. Let's give everyone an equal opportunity and let's make it beneficial for all and not just a chosen few. Vote no for the no-show mayor. Vote yes for Donna Clark for mayor November 4th. Let's do this together. And this message is paid for by Donna Clark, and we're all in it together. Thank you. Welcome back to Bridging the Gap to our second segment. We're going to be talking about the amendments. 
Amendments are very important because they oftentimes can change the whole structure of your whole constitution. And we're going to come back and talk to Mr. Is it Reverend or Petey or Mr. Powell? How would you like me to? Yes. <laughs> All of the above. All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> but Reverend Powell is going to kind of kick us off and, and talk about the state amendments, of which around the country people are, are have mixed views on mm -hmm. them. And Petey, would you kind of tell us which three of them, and we'll kind of chime in and chime in and help you. But he wanted to yes, speak to that last issue. Yes, I did. Oh. Let me, if I could digress for a moment, before we took the break, we were talking about uh, small, business. small businesses and the impact uh, and importance thereof. But what I clearly heard from Mark and Deb uh, when he described the concern for, for not just the northern or eastern quarter of his district, uh, Deb also not just concerned about Perdido uh, in sec certain segments of District 2, but talked about the breadth of all of those communities. And all of that, 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 that kind of just sounded off to me uh, of, a, of, of a government of people for the people. And I think that's a lot of concern in the community is that we don't have representatives that's representing the whole. Uh, so, but in their explanation of their, their focus and their vision for their districts, uh, it came through clear, and I think that's so important. Well, the question Thank is, you. and we are a whole community. We are. And uh, someone uh, mentioned it to me today that, I, I think it was my daughter, she said, Mom, we're all connected. Mm -hmm. And at a point, we have to stop seeming different, but get on one accord. Yeah, and mm -hmm. for you, the voters out there, that's what this show is really all about, getting on one accord and finding out who is the right person for the job and then holding them accountable uh, when they get elected or if they're uh, already in position and you feel that they're not doing what they need to do, you need to hold them accountable. And then at these polls on November 4th, and we want to remind you, it's November 4th, it's right around the corner, less than a month, you vote your con conscience. You know, you can vote to keep people in or you can vote to vote them out. So we're going to talk about the amendments today and move on to that. Mm -hmm. And uh, Reverend Powell, if you would kind of outline the amendments on the state that's on the ballot. Well, there's three amendments on the state that's on the ballot. Amendment one is our uh, water and land conservation. Amendment two is uh, uh, medical marijuana. And amendment three is uh, judicial appointments. And would you kind of break it down and tell us what exactly each one is? Well, and, and I'll do it in some layman terms because as as you know, there's a wealth of information uh, that deals with all three of these amendments. And sometimes we can get lost up in, in all of the jargon and all of the legal terms and, and the voter still doesn't know uh, what you're asking them to do. Thank you, uh, but when you look at the, um, the water and land conservation, uh, merely just the intent to, to put in the Constitution by way of amendment uh, to allow the dollars associated with keeping up our water, our land, and our wildlife uh, concerns uh, uh, with funds that have been earmarked, so to speak, within the within the uh, state's budget. And I think there's it's something to the tune of about uh, 1.6 mil, uh, which should aggregate uh, by over a 20-year period to about about 2 billion. Uh, but the intent of the amendment is to set aside, identify those funds for those particular concerns in those three areas that I that I talked about. And what are your feelings on whether people should vote yes or no on that, uh, Deb and Mark? I'm for it. I mean, as uh, somebody who really enjoys this pristine area that we live in, I want clean water, I want clean air, and I want to preserve the lands that we live on. Um, I'm for low-impact development, and I'm for preserving and living, uh, you know, amongst uh, the creatures and um, you know, the things that we talk about all the time. The um, alligators and the yes, lizards. Yes, yes, <laughs> um, absolutely. Um, so, no, I think this is important. It's not going to cost us extra. It's just setting aside the money that is already there. Right. I, I, too, all draw a vote in favor for Amendment 1. I'm an Eagle Scout. I was born and raised in the woods. I love the outdoors. I've got two boys, a three-and-a-half-year-old and a, a one-year-old that love the outdoors just as much, and I certainly will support Amendment 1. Can someone tell me what would be a downside for those voters out there who are just simply, you got to look at both sides? Well, if you look at some of the pros and cons across other states, 
uh, one of the prevailing downside was just the whole idea of altering our constitution, the whole idea of uh, now having taken away some of the flexibility of budget movement away from the state, uh, uh, you know, as budget planners. It, it's already in the constitution. Uh, it's amendment two, uh, and, and as I look at that, uh, our great uh, uh, framers of the Constitution operated in a time in uh, in a culture uh, when they had a grasp of, of of what they could see, so to speak. And we have migrated and evolved into the great country and nation state that we are. And it just comes at times when we have to revisit uh, those things that we kind of had a firm feel for a hundred years ago and based on evolution of things, uh, we make adjustment. But it's already in the Constitution. Uh, so it's not a, a direct inclusion or, or exclusion of, of what's currently in the Constitution. And for you that are out there, these uh, amendments are on the website. On the website, Supervisor, um, election, supervisor election. You need to take the time to go look at them. And let's move quickly to the next amendment. And the second amendment is that of medical marijuana. Uh, when you say that, the average, uh, almost said consumer, <laughs> but the <laughs> average citizen uh, would, would equate that to, to the criminal side of what we know about marijuana. And I think this amendment uh, most definitely deals with the medical uh, need for it, uh, but also puts in the, the, the safety uh, Safeguard. measures, mm -hmm. safeguards, uh, that it's not criminalized. Uh, you can only be prescribed through it by a licensed physician, for example. Uh, if you have been prescribed by a licensed physician, uh, you cannot uh, drive an automobile, uh, you cannot be in the, the public uh, 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 arena, uh, and it's banned from school. So those safety measures have been thought through, uh, but oftentimes when we just hear it as a potential uh, legalization, we think we just opened the floodgates gates and it's, all. it's, it's not that. Quickly, before we go to the break, uh, I, I just want you guys to know Bob Marley was using that 20 years ago, okay? <laughs> so there is a place for everything. I, I think the, the yeah. question is, how do we keep it under control? Yeah. And for those of you out there, that amendment is really important if you have a loved one who is suffering mm -hmm. from uh, a degenerate disease and who's in pain all the time. It's better than taking drugs who mo oftentimes makes I it even that. worse and mm -hmm. takes them away from us. Uh, so much sooner. So we're going to come back and talk about the last amendment in just a minute. Hi, my name is Audra Carter, host of Bridging the Gap TV show. Election day is November the 4th. Are you unsure who to vote for? Do you not understand the amendments? Join us on Bridging the Gap election 2014 and make your vote count. My name is Mark Taylor and I'm running for City Council District 6. I'm a small business owner and a family man. By voting for me, you are choosing integrity over insider politics and electing a council member who will put our residents first. And we're back to talk about the last amendment. And uh, Reverend Powell, you going to speak to that? Uh, yes, real quickly, uh, Audrey, uh, the third amendment uh, uh, deals with judicial appointments. And it basically uh, sets parameters uh, for the uh, current governor uh, to make appointments. Uh, with uh, certain constraints, uh, a term uh, ending before the election time period or if the, in if the incumbent for some reason did not uh, make the re-election. But what it does, it, it puts a safeguard in for the incoming governor uh, to have the latitude to make that appointment uh, as opposed to an outgoing governor making an appointment on, the, uh, on, on going out and then the incoming governor would have to live with that. So it basically kind of just puts in order uh, the, the appointment process uh, for the current governor and the, the governor that may be uh, the incoming governor. So what's the feeling of that, yes or no, quickly? I think yes. How about you, Deb? I'm not sure. I, I you? still have to do research. Hey, I'm honestly not sure yet how I'm going to vote on that one. So mm -hmm. listen, you guys out there, let me just tell you, one of the most important things is you have to go and do the research yourself. Yeah, absolutely. You know, as you can see right here, everybody's not exactly sure, but we were on the other ones. So we're going to go quickly to the counties. Uh, making decisions and have a couple of minutes too. Deb, if you could do that for us. Sure. There are two ballot issues on your ballot, obviously, uh, <laughs> on November 4th. And the two issues are the extension of two taxes. One is the LOST, which is the local option sales tax. That is a 1% sales tax 
that is added to those goods, they're not consumable goods, they're durable goods, that everybody will share. And these are, this is the LOST fourth. So this is the fourth time this will be added. And these are uh, important um, projects that will be taking care of our infrastructure, sidewalks, buildings that are needed in the community. Um, the second one is the school board half cent sale tax, the SUR tax. This is providing for infrastructure also in the schools, um, gym equipment, roofs, also uh, improvements in uh, fire systems and air conditioning. Okay, so what's the, what does everyone say on that one, Petey? Yes. Absolutely, yes. I, I agree. I agree. Okay, mm -hmm. so those of you out there, this is what our panel is saying. And the final and most important one, Mark, can you go through those? Yes, the, the final two amendments uh, are on the city ballot. And um, it has to do with the recall of the mayor, which was the, uh, we all believe we were voting on in the charter a few years ago. It was even published that we were, the mayor would be subject to recall, but somehow that fell through and wasn't in there. I'll personally vote yes on that. And then the second one is for the council to have their own executive staff. We saw back in the summer the mayor fire the council executive caused a big firestorm at City Hall, and the council should have the ability to hire and fire their own folks that work specifically for them. So I personally support both of them. Okay, and how about anybody else commenting on that? I am a city uh, resident, so I will vote to support those also. And you, Petey? And I support them too, both. And so now we're looking for you, the voter, to do your homework. We have shared with you why we feel the way we feel, but most importantly, you have to vote your conscience. And we're asking you that if you have any questions, you go ahead and look on the website. And we thank you so much for being on the show with me. Thank all of you for being a part of this. I thank hope you, Audra. We thank helped you. you today. And we look forward to seeing you again in another segment of Bridging the Gap.